Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening for the Village of Elsip uh, committee meeting. Today is August 13, 2017. I'm sorry, 2018. I will call this meeting in order at 7:32. Can you call the roll, please? Sure. Trustee McGreal uh, currently is not here. I believe she's running late. Trustee Delzell here. Trustee Zelinsky here. Trustee Juarez is absent. Trustee McLawhorn here. Mayor Ryan here. Great. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, Officers re report starting with myself. Actually, you know, I wanted to. Um, oh, we'll get down to the. You know, I want to move around here, folks, a little bit because I did recognize someone in the audience that has an attorney with them, and I would like to be considerate of um, having an attorney on the premise yet too, where we can move our agenda around a little bit. Trustees, you okay with that? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I'd like to move right to the planning and zoning, and uh, this would be item I on your agendas. And um, Trustee Zelinsky, go ahead. I'll let you give a report. Okay. This evening we have a discussion of planning and zoning commission recommendation with a vote of five to nothing for the case number 2018-08-Z-200 to change, to change zoning from B2 to I1 industrial light for the property property commonly known as 11901 South Cicero Avenue. Next we have a discussion of Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation with a vote of 7 to 0 for case number 2018-07-Z-300 to change zo zoning from B1 business to B1 business special use for a sign variance to replace a pylon sign commonly known as 4200 to 4301 West 129th Street, which is the Swaparama. Do we uh, want them to come up and comment on something like this? Sure. Um, uh, Mr. Joseph and the attorneys. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Sure. Zelensky. <clears throat> Um, we very much appreciate the opportunity to be here. We appreciate your time and your effort. We were before the Zoning and Planning Commission last month, and they did recommend to approve the special use permit. We're here to answer questions. Um, we commissioned a light study, a background light study for the sign, which you all have copies of because one of the trustees did have, one of the commissioners did have a question about the effect of the sign and how it might affect some of the homes that are on the other side of the tollway. And that study will show, and we have the engineer that drafted the study here to testify, if you'd like, that the effect is negligible. At best, there'll be a, a one, less than 1% 1 of a foot candle change in the ambient light if this sign is put into effect from the light that's there now because of the tollway, the other signs, the other lights, the 18-foot wall, the trees, and the shrubs that are there. So this sign is industry standard. Um, it's not going to affect the homes. It's not going to change anything. Um, we can go through the study if you'd like. Mr. Joseph, Ted Joseph is here. He's the chief operating officer, chief financial officer for Swaparama. Justin Joseph is here. He is the director of operations for Swaparama. We want to be a good citizen. We want to address your concerns. We think this sign would be in the best interest for Swaparama and the village to improve a, a very old and a very outdated sign. Um, and I'm, I'm willing to take your lead. This is the first time we hear, we're here, but I'd like not to talk any more than you want us to. No, I, I can. Uh, Trustee, were you here for the, for that meeting at all? I was. Go ahead. I, I like. don't have any questions for it. Uh, everything okay. asked by the commission was answered by these folks, and uh, I've, knowing where the sign is going to be placed, I have. I don't think uh, it would be effective, have any effect on residential either. 
right and it is slightly oversized compared to the one that they had per our ordinance for the LED sign. For the sign ordinance, right. But being that it's so far away from residential, I don't see a reason why not to pass it. Okay. The main question that I have is that does this require approval from the state as well because of it being on the tollway? It does not. We did go through that. It is in the materials that we prepared and presented for zoning and planning. The tollway doesn't require any approval for this because it's an on-premise sign. It's not a billboard. It's not an advertising sign. It's on our premises, our sign. And that information is in the packet of materials. I have another copy here, if you'd like it, that we presented to zoning and planning. That's a great question. We actually, I'm sorry, sir. Well, when you get done, for the record, we'll ask you for the clerk to sign in and so forth. I just spoke to the board tonight. But we actually did contract with a billboard company. And right now it's going through a couple of changes. It's going to be with Shout Out Media. But it took almost five years. We approved that back in 2012. It took five years for the IDOT or the Illinois Department of Tollways to actually approve our permit for that billboard. But we're actually, as the trustee just pointed out, or you just pointed out, we're going to operate a billboard, not an on-premise sign. And, again, I'm sure it was already brought up, but you're not going to be advertising for any third parties. This is exclusively for the benefit of Swaparama. That is 100% correct. We're not advertising for anybody other than Swaparama. Okay. And I'd like, and for the benefit of the public, too, folks, just so you know, Albert Coria, for the benefit of the public, the sign for this is going to be right off the tollway. So it's not on the street side. This is on the tollway side to advertise for your business over there. I like the demographic you gave us there, too, for basically the radius of how this can be seen. And I did hear from the trustee, and I heard from actually our attorney, who was at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. He said it was a good meeting, and they covered quite a bit of ground, and I appreciate all the materials you folks brought with you at the same time. And, again, they're making a recommendation 7070 in favor of the sign. So we can place this on our agenda next week for approval. Tonight is just a committee meeting where we can have discussion, and I wish you the best of luck with that then. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Trustees, we thank you. Commissioners, we thank you. We have a question since this is our first time to do this. We will be here next week for your meeting. I understand it's at the same time a week from tonight. Do you need any other materials, presentation, or would you just like us here to answer questions? You know what? I think what you present tonight, Trustees, I thought this was sufficient right here. I mean, anything else you need? Typically a question and answer is performed at the committee meeting, so I think that if you've run the gauntlet tonight, it should be pretty calm for the meeting. Wonderful. Thank you. And do you need us to look at or do we have an opportunity to look at a draft of the special use permit, or will that come next week if it's approved? You know what? Actually, the building commissioner is out right now temporarily, and I'll tell you what, I'll have somebody forward you an answer to that tomorrow. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Can you make a note on that? Thank you. Thank you. We look forward to seeing everyone next week. I always want to be conscious. You know, you get a professional. You're an attorney in the room. We really are. No problem. Ted, I get it. All right. Sign in, please. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Trustee Zielinski, can you forward a copy of the planning and zoning paperwork? I mean, whatever came with the recommendation. I haven't seen. No, I said Trustee Zielinski. Well, no, I want this stuff from the planning and zoning board. Because as I say, it's not included in our board package. Yeah, I can get with Stanley and have him send you something. Okay. Uh, I have one more there, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Uh, one and I, more. I, and I, sorry, I didn't show it for all three of them because I said there there is no backup for the planning and zoning stuff in the packet. No problem. Thank you. And the third one is a discussion of planning and zoning commission's recommendation with a vote of four to zero for case number 2018-08-V. Dash 100 to build an oversized garage at a size of 30 by 34 at the property property commonly known as 11631 South Carloff. That's all I have tonight. Okay, and I know you and I were at that meeting last week. Yes. Um, 
And I will say, so, so the public understands, I, I see the folks are here this evening too. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission did do the math on this. It is compliant with the um, property size. Property size, and it's a small variance to it is all it is, but it's, it's, it definitely qualifies. You've got a nice big lot at your house, which qualifies for a garage this size then too. So um, folks, will, again, we'll put this on the agenda next week for a final approval then too. Trustees, any questions on that? I want to go back too, just for the record, uh, just in, in case there's any questions on the first item that was brought up at 119.01 South Cicero. Um, basically, this is Trustee. You're at that meeting, so this is Central this, Crane. This is right? uh, Central Crane uh, taking over for the uh, Fun Time Square. Fun Time Square. So, Central Crane bought Fun Time Square, so they're actually going to leave the campus. Uh, and I believe that they bought Smitty's too, right? The, I the, believe so. Um, but they said for Fun Time Square, I believe they're going to demolish everything except for where they have concessions. They want to keep that building for office space, I believe. Sure. So um, we'll probably be seeing some changes shortly for over there. Okay. So that campus at Central Crane is actually going to be like in a U shape where they've got a campus right now at 120th Street, and it's going to go from Cicero back, you know, maybe a block or so, that however deep it is. Right and then shoot north and then come back towards Cicero Avenue again then too. So it's one big U. And um, again, this was approved 5-0 in, in, um, in favor of uh, rezoning that property to, to let that purchase take place. Okay. Anybody here from Central Crane this evening too? Okay. All right. Well, then again, we'll place it on the agenda next week for approval as well then too. Thank you. Okay, we'll go back to our regular agenda then uh, with the mayor, uh, my report. Uh, trustees, again, a couple of reminders. Uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, please register for the Illinois Municipal League's 105th Annual Conference. Uh, it's, this is a premier educational and networking opportunity for municipal officials and staff. This year, the Illinois Municipal League has added two new tracks for human resources and trending topics uh, such as uh, legislative ag advocacy, featuring, featuring a panel of legislators, uh, brick and mortar retail, and uh, they're saying it isn't dead, it's just evolving, uh, managing your message and working with media uh, amid a, like a major incident like media statements, uh, FOIA and Open Meeting Act updates, festivals, public demonstrations, and incident <coughs> preparedness. TIF tips, getting the most out of your TIF district, and a roundtable discussion for mayors, council members, and women in government. Uh, again, um, their keynote speaker, this goes on from Thursday through Saturday, and their keynote speaker on Friday, to September 21st, will be uh, Bo Jackson, will be the keynote speaker. So, again, uh, this goes from September 20th through 22nd at the Hilton Chicago downtown. This coming Thursday, I plan to attend the International Council of Shopping Centers uh, Convention. This will be held at the Hyatt Regency Schaumburg this year. And with our economic development uh, team, from Chris Mannheim and Roger Hopkins are going to be there. And again, we are going to try and uh, approach, as we did last year, um, literally as many businesses as, as we can uh, to promote some of our properties on both Cicero and Pulaski Avenue. So we're hoping for good results to come from that. Uh, at last Wednesday's uh, Plan and Zoning Commission meeting, um, my assistant Becky had gotten Trustee Zelensky, and he distributed to the Plan and Zoning Commissioners uh, a um, save-the-date notice for Wednesday, September 12th, from 5.30 till 8.30 p.m., they're, they're presenting a complimentary uh, workshop for planning and zoning training, commissioner training. Uh, a light dinner will be served at this event as well. And um, topics to be discovered are responsibilities of a plan commission, uh, the role of elected officials, staff, ap staff rather, applicants, and the public in, in the process, and how to run a public meeting, take testimony, and prepare findings of fact, making fair, objective, objective defensible uh, decisions, and an open meeting act and the ex part contacts, conflicts and interest, and certainly ethics 
uh, when considering planning and zoning responsibilities as a commissioner. So we, uh, some of the commissioners did say they'd like to take advantage of that, so we hope they do, and I'll remind them again then too. Or if you would, please, trustee, if you can remind them, that'd be great. Also, I got a notice um, from the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. Uh, should anyone be a sheet metal worker looking for an, a new job, they're taking applications from Monday, July 30th through Friday, September 7th, to be a sheet metal worker for MWRD. Uh, starting hourly rate for that is 44.25 an hour, and certainly we'll post this on our bulletin board out in the hallway as far as duties and requirements are concerned. Moving on to what, what everyone has on their agendas, I have a presentation of a potential business by Brandon Belcher, a resident of Elsa, who would like to open a tattoo studio at 5042 West 127th Street. Brandon, are you here? Oh, no. Thanks for coming Hi. in. <laughs> Thank you for having me. All right. And thank the trustees also. It's really just a questionnaire. You know, sure. Realistic. You know, um, I know that the main issue is just the ordinance, um, the special use ordinance, I believe is number 18, that requires that we have a doctor and a facility at all times. Um, I did have a presentation. Granted, it's long. My mom works for the city of Dalton, so I understand that, you know, you don't want to take up all the time. Right. Um, so with that being the case, I'm really here just for any questions or concerns on what Sure. No, I, I can yeah, fill in for you. I, I know. So if I can give a quick overview, what, what Brandon's asking for is he'd like to open a tattoo studio parlor. Um, however, and I, it, Brandon's been communicating with my assistant, Becky, Not and um, I wanted to just re reiterate, uh, Brandon would need a what the, what's known as a special use permit for, for zoning. Yes, sir. And the following permits are, the following are permitted as special uses, in a B1 district, so a business district, and um, part of the uh, compliance that you would need in order to have a tattoo studio is under number 19, is that um, there's an interesting one right above it for just for, for who's listening is the bingo games are not more than twice a week, so <laughs> you can't have more than two bingo games a week in there, but under number 18. But uh, anyway, number 19, I just caught that, Brandon, a fun fact. It's fine. <laughs> is um, any cosmetic service involving puncturing of human skin, including but not limited to ear piercing, skin graphics, hair transplants, etc., uh, without the direct supervision of a licensed medical doctor present? So certainly every village has got its own Absolutely. caveats and its own rules and so forth. Absolutely. Um, again, you're like anything else, you're looking at an administration that many of us have been involved with this community for years, but this is the way I don't have the exact date when the, when this was adopted. October of 2008. It was in 08 that this came yes, into sir. play. Okay. 2000 of, excuse me, I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, December of, December 26 of 2008. The Illinois State, uh, the Illinois Department of Public Health adopted the uh, body arts staff, uh, the body arts ordinance mm -hmm. basically, and it explains what we are qualified to have uh, in order to operate in a tattoo shop, let alone own one. You know, there are certain rules and regulations that are uh, they have to be abided by to even step foot in, you know, tattoo somebody's skin and it's medically. Sure. You know, you have and, to be responsible for everything. And we all understand it's a popular profession. You know, a lot of folks patronize the um, the tattoo studios. Um, and certainly I was just, I just had dinner in Chicago Ridge before I came here, and there was one right next door to the restaurant that I was in. <laughs> um, not everybody has this. What I don't have, Brandon, is the um, statuette on what you just referred to. You know, and probably, let's put it this way, trustees, if, if we were to consider adopting what the state has adopted mm -hmm. then that would that's really the conversation that we need to have is whether or not we need we need to do that because we ever had we already have a zoning ordinance here uh, a zoning prov provision i should say here that, that what's uh, what the village is looking for unless we're looking to change that 
Right, no, absolutely. And, I, and the reason why I wanted to bring it up about uh, amounts of commu uh, trustees and yourself, just simply because I think that, with all due respect, yeah. that the ordinance itself is a little outdated. Um, as of 2008, when the ordinance for the state was uh, issued, um, there's been an extremely huge decline in any hazardous situations in tattoo shops. A lot of them have been closed down because they weren't willing to comply with the regulations and so forth. But uh, with that being said, I've been tattooing for seven years. I'm um, still young, of course, but for the most part, the idea of uh, opening the shop in that particular area is a little bit off to the side. It's not really visible to the norm. Uh, it isn't going to be an open tattoo shop, as in you're not going to be able to just walk in whoopsie doopsie and get your tattoo and leave. Realistically, um, I have my own clientele, so the re so in all honesty, it will be a studio where it's private. Um, it have uh, tenant windows. Uh, they have the logo outside of it, but for the most part, it's really just appointment only. So you would have to contact me personally and then come in and get a piece done. Um, but that'd be a fur that's further down the line of everything, and of course. But um, yeah, but with one of the things that kind of took me by surprise was mainly the dates that everything was established as far as the the ordinance that you're speaking of, number 19, or, yeah, number, ni yeah, number 19. Um, it was put into effect of October, and, of course, every village has their own, you know. Um, but the state put theirs in December, and I'm assuming it's because of not having the proper information that, that that this passed through. So that's why I'm, I was just here for any questions that had to be asked. Because I know when it comes to the tattoo community, we kind of have a bad, you know, bad rap just because of, you know, not with everybody, but a lot of people kind of look at it like, okay. <laughs> and again, for the benefit of the public, the location that you're looking at is on 127th Street, you're just going to be in that row of businesses just east of like the Doubletree Hotel, right? Yes. Okay. And that, was, and that was for the reason of guest spots and stuff like that, basically having clients fly in, et cetera, et cetera. So you're kind of perpendicular with the street. You're not necessarily directly on the street or anything like that. Yeah, it's like the last storefront at the end of the... Uh, of the row of businesses. Yeah, it's right. crazy. Okay. <laughs> um, again, trustees, any questions? Because I, th I answer, can't answer my own. I, I think before we consider... Um, changing this but for it, it, um, not just to accommodate but if we're interested in adopting what the state has proposed as opposed to what we've got in our zoning uh, we're going to just a little more discussion on that in order to, in order to really look at this and I don't have it available this evening I think it'd be prudent just to refer it off to the committee and obviously the uh, attorney. attorney and I have no doubt that our ordinances are, uh, a few of them are, are dated, and especially if they're not used often. I, I can I can tell you, Brandon, I, and myself, Trustee uh, Trustee Dalzell, we you know we've been on the board for the past seven years. Uh, Trustee McLaughlin was here back in '05. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to speak for you, but in the last seven years, nobody's even asked for a tattoo. Yeah, um, and that's what I assume. So it's, it's so, always nice to have a discussion. I know every neighboring neighborhood, I worked at, not being funny, I worked at every tattoo shop around. So okay. it's just a matter of, you know, like, okay, let me ask and see. Sure, nobody, nobody's yeah. saying no, but uh, as the trustee said, um, how about, we'll certainly, Becky's done a nice job of communicating with you so far, and, and we'll, we'll um, I'll certainly stay in touch with you right away. Mm -hmm. And as, as the trustee mentioned, let me get the, uh, let me just go through our, our firm, our legal firm, and get a little bit of direction from them, as well as what the statute is right now. Mm -hmm. And I'd be happy to, you know, have you bring us back to the board and see if they'd like to adopt that. You know, I mean, we, we went through something, I don't know, um, six, eight months ago where we actually uh, went back and reviewed, let's say, like the um, 1934 Liquor, Liquor Control Act. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and it's like... You know, we were. We, well, well, what happened was actually their <laughs> process was easier than ours. We changed it, and made it a little more difficult on ourselves, and the board saw. Um, they, they actually helped me a little bit. We we softened up uh, retail sales is what we left consumption at 300 feet, and uh, I'm sorry, consumption's at 300 feet. Retail sales were at 100. The Illinois Liquor Control Act said 100 on both. 
So, I mean, sometimes it's worth, you know, bringing things before folks and seeing if, like, by today's thinking and see if we'd like to consider something like that then, Absolutely. too. So certainly don't get discouraged by it, but let's we'll take this a little a step further and, and see if we, what we can do, okay? Okay, absolutely. Is there any steps that I need to take next or just sit back and wait? Not yet. No, we'll, stand, we'll certainly t- stay in touch with you right away. Okay. You know, I mean, this is our job. Uh, Brandon, if you would, would you keep sign, in? sign in for the clerk so you could just uh, for the record that you spoke to us tonight. It's absolutely. right here on the Thank table. You. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks much. All right, moving along then, too, we had a presentation from Haunted RPM uh, to have a weekend holiday event at the Mulberry Ridge property he'd like to use. Um, I'm sorry. Come on up. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Was it Matt? Mark. Mark, thank you. Thanks, yeah. Mark. Yeah. Is it okay if I give these? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Good, Mark. If you want to give an overview of what, what you what you were proposing to, to do, sure. And I appreciate the opportunity pr- to present this, uh, Mayor Ryan, trustees. Thank you for taking the time. Um, I, it's kind of a unique idea. It's something we've done in the past, and for the sanity of everybody, there's a lot of information in the packet here. Uh, it's more for you guys to look at later on if you want to read through everything thoroughly. We'll kind of skim through some parts and focus on the important parts. Okay. Um, Basically, the idea that we have is hosting a three-day Halloween festival. Okay, imagine something like Ridge Fest or something like that geared towards Halloween. Okay, nobody does it. Nobody's really perfected it, and there's only been very small types of events that have even tried to approach this. Um, there is something north in Elgin. It's called uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. They do very well. Okay, we take that, we put it more of a family appeal. Um, our history, just to give you a little history of myself, I've been hosting events for 15 years across the country, mostly car shows. Uh, sadly, we kind of created the Fast and Furious scene. Um, that's died down, okay? In the midst of that, what we did was we tried a Halloween car show in 2010. We did that at the Odium in Villa Park. And that car show actually had a lot more people than our summer shows, and people were a lot more enthusiastic about it because it gave them a second chance to wear their costume, to decorate their cars, just to have fun with Halloween instead of the one day a year that you go out and try to wear your costume when it's not raining. Um, in 2012, we did it again, okay, except we toned down the car show aspect of it and we focused a little bit more on the family side of it. Uh, we teamed up with the Odyssey Fun World in Naperville and the Massacre Haunted House. Uh, they, we actually, that show, we did over 6,000 people in one day. Um, we had about 200 cars. Odyssey Fun World, if you don't know, imagine Chuck E. Cheese on steroids. <laughs> uh, the Haunted House was upstairs. We constantly had a flow of people going all night. And this car show was only five hours, four hours. You know, we, don't, we try not to keep people there too long because we want you to be entertained. We don't, we don't want you to be bored. Um, so essentially what that's doing is it's paving the way for the next generation of this which is a full-on three-day Halloween festival, okay? Not geared towards cars. We want to we wanna make it a very small aspect of it, but it's not based around a car show, okay? Now we want to base it around live music, food, vendors, inflatable toys, you know, kids, families coming out, haunted houses, more of an overall festival for everybody to come out and everybody can have fun, okay? Um, if we go to... If you go to the first page, it's just kind of an overview of our history, a little bit about me, if you're curious. Um, Second page gives you some pictures of our events. We have hosted large events. I've done events downtown at Soldier Field that have brought in 20,000 plus people in a one-day event. Uh, We've hosted professional drifting. We've done every form of car entertainment. Um, Those are just some of the pictures. If you look at the bottom of those pictures, some of those are from our other Halloween shows. So you see people get dressed, they get into it. We do costume contests, giveaways. So, um, and then if you go to the next page, page three, uh, this goes over some of the details of the ideas that we have for this year's event. Um, I've already worked, I've already teamed up with 
Midnight Terror's Haunted House on 111th and Central. Justin's a good friend of mine. Um, we want it to be a family event, okay? So we want every, everything is family friendly. It's for the kids. We don't want to go, we, we want to scare people within reason. We don't want it to scare away the kids so they don't want to come back. We want everybody to have fun. Um, we do want to have a beer tent, which obviously will be bracelets, ID check, security, everything will be taken care of with that. Um, we do have one thing we do that actually helps out a lot of different people is we do a lot of charity raffle wheels. Okay, and with this, we get companies to donate different items, whether it be discount tires, giving away hats or a discount, or sometimes I have companies donating a thousand dollar part that we can give away on a raffle wheel. Usually it keeps these wheels spinning all night long. Okay. Things like this will team up with, you know, the police department, we'll team up with a charity, we'll team up with different organizations to help with the charity raffle wheels. Um, we do have, with the haunted house, since it's not on site with this one, we, we will have two shuttle buses constantly moving people back and forth all night long. Um, I've already worked with the haunted house. They want to have it where the lights turn off in the bus. You get scared on the way over there. You get scared there. You come back. I mean, we, we want to make it fully interactive for everybody. Um, live music, we want to have a stage, stage, lights, sound, music. Um, we want to stay away from DJs just because we, since it's more of a family atmosphere, we want music that people can enjoy, but you're not going there for the concert. You know, we do prefer local bands. We're not bringing any big names people in. You know, it's, it's just very, it's more of an atmosphere type of music fest rather than you're going there to see a certain person. Um, stage also is used for, you know, we do a small car show, there will be awards, there will be costume contests, there will be different things that we do throughout the three days, so obviously we will use the stage for those type of things. Um, the car show itself, normally the car shows we host are between 200 to 500 cars. We're cutting all of that out. <laughs> it's only going to be the best of the best, maybe 20 to 25 cars at best. We want people to go there, look at the cars, enjoy them. And the car show is only going to be Saturday, okay? Friday and Sunday, no car show. They're not even there. Um, so it's a small portion of it. That's about it. I've got a lot of friends in the car scene, so I can bring out some of the best cars in Chicago for people to come see who want to look at them. It's not a big focus. Um, vendors, I do want to work with local vendors to sell food, cotton candy, drinks, you know, normal things like that. Um, you know, costume contests we want to do for children. Now, this is a dog-friendly event, okay? I, own, I have two dogs. I love bringing dogs out to things like this. It is going to be a dog-friendly event. We want to do a costume contest for children, adults, and dogs. If people can get into it, it's kind of a hard sell, but we'll see. Um, Saturday, Saturday. These are, these are kind of ideas we're still throwing around, but Saturday, since it is Sweetest Day, some people go for it, some people don't. We want to do something for couples on Saturdays also. Some ideas in the work with that. Uh, we're, we want to do a haunted corn maze that we can set up. Um, you know, we want people to take pictures with the actors. You know, take it. People are dressed in costume. They're walking around scaring you. Have the kids take a picture with them if they're not too afraid. Just have fun with it. Mm -hmm. um, this is a ticketed event. Okay, it will be ten dollars for adults, five dollars for kids. Um, you know, there's things in the works where we can give discounts for, let's say, a toy drive or a food drive or something in that nature. You know, we can work with that. Um, we're also teaming up with um, a guy who has a lot of giant inflatable games. Okay, and if you, there's pictures on the next page, so you can kind of see what he has. Uh, I can go over that there. Um, we also have a portable laser tag arena. That this is also from the same guy at the haunted house. He has during the summertime he does. Tactical, it's called tactical laser tag. It's kind of like Call of Duty in reality, from what he says. Um, and he also has an escape room that he can set up. So just different things for people to do to entertain their time to bring them out to the event. Um, we also, uh, one of my friends actually got uh, a huge group of pumpkins. So one thing we wanted to do, and this was this is an idea that uh, you know we're still working on, is we want to have pumpkin carving with some of the children's with the Elsip Police Department and Fire Department. Okay, we'll donate the pumpkins to the booth, you know, carving tools, things like that. Try to get the kids as involved with them as possible at a younger age. Um, if you go to the next page, these are just kind of pictures of the inflatables. 
kind of see they're not your backyard kind of inflatables. Okay. Um, you know, and these, the best part about these is they cater to children and adults. So it's not just put your kid in the inflatable toy and walk away. The parents can go in them too. So it's actually a lot of fun for a lot of people. Um, everything we do is going to be Halloween themed. So it's not just going to look like this. It's going to be dressed up with more of a Halloween gothic type of theme. Um, the escape rooms, the laser tag, pretty self-explanatory. Um, costume contests, again, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you look on the next page, the car show, you, two of those cars, those two, the, those two cars will be there. Um, live music, beer tent, pretty self-explanatory. So if you guys go to the next page, uh, that's our social media and marketing. We do have a very wide reach when it comes to marketing. Um, we're looking at just over 15 million impressions with our marketing campaign, and that involves online, flyers, local. I'm a grassroots guy. I prefer I'll pl print up a ton of flyers, go to every business, and drop them off by hand. That's my style. That's actually worked really well for us because then it also gets the businesses and everybody around the event excited as well. Okay. Um, the next page is, okay, so this is what, I'm, I'm sure the question comes up, all right, what does LSIP get out of this? Okay. I want to give back in any way I can. I've actually lived here for 15 years, so to me, LSIP is home. I love it. I want, I'd rather do the event here than any other city. We've done them in the past just because they were kind of proof of concept. Now that we have a good format and we know how to evolve it to the next level, I'd rather make this a staple in my home community. Um, for the LSIP police department and the fire department, um, I would like to give each of them a booth uh, just so they can be there, have fun with people. We can dress them up, maybe put makeup on them, make them zombies, whatever you guys want to do. It's, we can have some fun with it. Uh, so we want to do the pumpkin carving thing there, maybe a contest possibly. Uh, we want to set up a raffle wheel so anything people win, any money that's, got, that, that's made from that will be donated directly to the fire department, the police department. Okay, they keep all the proceeds. Uh, usually, just to give you an average, on average raffle wheels at the events, we charge $5 a spin and on average each wheel will make between $500 to $1,000 a day. So they, they keep going because we'll put usually about five to $7,000 worth of prizes on a wheel and people will just keep spinning until they win them. So um, also I know Elsa does a toy and a food drive. We can also lump that in with this, maybe at the police and fire department booths. Um, we can set up a toy drive where we could possibly give them a discount ticket for entry if they bring a can or a food, um, give them discounts to the haunted house, different things. Obviously those details can be worked out, but we're very open to motivating people to, to bring things for the donations. Um, the, next, the next idea I have, and this one kind of hits home really hard, is with the unfortunate passing of Eddie. Um, I'm a dog owner myself, and it's hard to even think about it without getting choked up. But I would like to do something to honor his memory, and if there's any kind of fundraiser or anything we can do to help out, I'm 100% open to that, given it's a, it's a dog-friendly event. I'd love to help out with that. Um, the next part, realistically, is bringing, to, bringing together the community. Um, people like events. People like coming out. They like having fun. They like telling their friends about it. If there's something that I can make Elsip famous for, I'd like to do it. You know, I'd like to peep... I'd like to let people know about the great community we have, about the great town we have, and what we have to offer. Um, this, I think, with the way we want to work this and the way I want to work this with ELSIP businesses, because that's my first goal, is to have everybody from ELSIP involved first before I reach outside. Okay, if there's an ELSIP business that wants to be here, in my personal opinion, they get first rights. Um, you know, it's something I'd love to do this every year. Instead of trying different cities, trying to find a right fit, I'd like to just make this a yearly thing so people can start to come here and expect it, you know? So uh, the next page is the flip side of it. What do I need from you guys? <laughs> um, best part, financially, nothing. This is, we are 100% privately funded. We don't need any money to run this event. Um, all we would need from you is certain permissions, and with your permission, we can make this a reality. Uh, 
the things we would ask for would be uh, Mulberry Drive, the lot of land you guys own, ideally. We've already visited that, and the land looks great. It looks perfect for what we want to do. Uh, there are some key things we look for, which is a cement area for the staging, different things like that. Um, there are some questions we would have about the lot itself, but those are things we can get answered later. Mark, what was the, and maybe back, I'm a little fuzzy too, it's, oh. it's, we've been talking for a couple of weeks, but Sorry. we were looking at the um, boat launch property as well. What happened with that? What was the problem that we had with that? I see. Okay. Just to use the property. Okay. There's a five thousand dollar permit fee just to use the boat launch. Okay. I in, I remember I, well, when I talked to you on the phone. I said, yeah. man, that might be a great spot to do yeah, that. Yeah, we down checked there. it out. We loved the venue. Yeah. Location was a bit rough to get to. Yeah. But loved the venue. And then uh, Becky was also telling me, which hi Becky, by the way. <laughs> I haven't met her before, so it's the first time. Mm -hmm. um, the other issue was apparently getting a liquor license there would be permission from them, which I heard isn't too easy to get. So okay. instead of fighting an uphill battle, it's not worth it. And I know you spoke with the park district and so forth, and that's the thing too. Now, Mark, is that really a, a large component of, of the of, of of this event? Is is the liquor is having a beer tent? It's a big portion of profits for the people who have invested in the show, okay. just because it is the biggest profit maker of these type of events. All right, because I know you talk with the park district, but they certainly they, they can't do that because Actually, of which. Actually, I, I got an email from Jeanette this morning. At this point, we were still talking to them about location, um, also because after the boat launch didn't work out last week, I put in a ton of phone calls. Actually, Swaparama was one of them. Um, put a ton of phone calls into private businesses, different places. I mean, I have I think we've got about 20 calls in right now to different places we're waiting to hear from on location. Ideally, I'd like to work directly with LSIP, mm -hmm. and if we can, if, if everybody allows us to have this location, it would be perfect. Okay. So um, just based I on foot traffic, based on everything around it, it really does work out. Plus, it's not near too many residents, so it's not, you know, having the loud music, it's not gonna bother too many people. And that's why I want to get across. I want to let everybody know we did look at other other you know spaces uh, as far as a decent venue to have something like this yet too. So it's a little bit rough to find something. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we would want that land. Um, the other thing I would ask for is for the village hall. Our our initial idea was to use the street that village hall is on right here. I think it's Orchard. Mm -hmm. uh, was to use this street and to make it a street festival. Uh, when we went to go look at the Mulberry lot, it actually is a better fit for the event itself. And then, if possible, we just use Village Hall as patron parking, just so there's no overflow in the streets. Um, and then, as far as hour-wise, Friday we wouldn't open until all business here is closed and people are gone. Okay. Um, the dates we would need it would be October 18th to the 21st. The event goes from the 19th to the 21st, but for the 18th, we would just want it for pre-marking, setup, things like that, okay? Just to make sure. The other thing was if it rains the day before, we want to make sure if there's water that collects anywhere that we take care of it, things like that, just in preparation, just so there's no issues, no hazards. You know, I saw there was some electrical boxes. We want to make sure those are, mm -hmm. you know, boxed off from people just because when you do have alcohol, you have drunk people. So sure. with that, we want to take all the precautions we can to protect everything we can around there. Um, the open and closing time, it's negotiable. Obviously, there are the townhomes that are there. We don't want to get anybody annoyed with this. So we're open to suggestion when it comes to the times. Um, ideally, Friday, we were thinking maybe from 6 to 10 or 11, depending on uh, noise ordinances. And then Saturday, Sunday, we were thinking more like 3 o'clock, till about 10 or 11 and Sunday probably close about 9 just because Sunday nights are a little bit less popular. Saturday is going to be your heavy traffic day. Mm -hmm. um, this weekend was also chosen very specifically because over our market research there are uh, just about a million people out going to haunted houses at any given time on this weekend. It's one of the most popular haunted house times all year. Uh, it's the week right before Halloween so you're not competing directly with Halloween, and it's really important because when you compete with Halloween, you compete with Halloween parties. People don't want to go outside when they can go inside, have a party with their friends. This way, we, we get to them a week before. 
give them something to do and they can still go enjoy it. We, we market this as it's a second excuse to wear your costume. You know, have fun, come out, enjoy it, and you're not going to look foolish because everybody else is the same way. We dress up in costumes. Everybody dresses up in costumes. All the staff, we, you know, the haunted house is actually going to have makeup guys there. So if anybody, if you guys want to come out, we'll put some makeup on you and you can have some fun. Um, next items would be requests, but they're not requirements. Um, I would like to ask if Elsa Police Department could donate some officers for security, ideally the ID check. Um, just We do hold our own security, just to let you know. Uh, this would be in addition to that. Um, over experience, I've noticed if you have local police officers at the beer tent, people send, tend to take it a little more serious. Okay, It's not some big goofy security guard, it's a police officer that they respect and they're not going to try to sneak by. Um, also for if we could have traffic directing, um, the only issue we run into is we don't know what to expect for this kind of event because we've never done this exact event over three days. So we don't know the kind of traffic to expect. I'd rather be prepared and just in case there's 100 cars coming down the street and these are not big streets, I want to make sure people are there to direct them, park them, so we don't have a cluster of cars pouring out into 123rd and a whole different problem. Um, regardless, if the officers are not able to be donated, their time at least, uh, we will provide our own security, our own everybody to handle this. It's just a request. Um, the other thing would be is for the fire department, if they could supply a medical tent, just because with this many people with alcohol, if something happens, we want to have medical staff on hand just to make sure everything's okay. Um, the other one is suggestions. Uh, this, if, it's greatly appreciated if we can get this. Uh, you know, we have a sales team. We go out, we sell the vendor spots, we, we do everything to make this happen. It would just be a list of the ELSA businesses and contact numbers so we can get to work and, and do what we need to do for sales. Um, so that's, that's all we would need from you guys. You know, financially, everything is taken care of on our end. Um, next page is how we conduct business, okay? We have fun, we love these events. They are, they're not work to us, they're a passion, okay? But with that, there is a business behind it, and we do need to be professional. Um, we have hosted these events in very large venues. We've done them in small venues. So there is, these are a list of bullet points of the things that we do take care of to kind of ease everybody's mind, because these are the most common questions. And if you guys do have any more questions, please feel free to ask. Um, we do carry our own insurance, whatever the, you know, you, if you guys let us know what kind of insurance, the amount, you let us know. We'll, we'll make sure we carry it and give you proof before the event. Um, any vendor involved, they must have a business license, they must carry insurance. That's one thing we stress more than anything. Uh, they must present themselves in a professional manner. We don't want people, you know, if they're showing up to our event, they are representing us, we don't want them to make us look bad, whether it be online or anything else. We want to maintain a professional image, even though this is a fun event. Um, same thing with the bar. Ideally for the beer tent, I don't, here, I'm not an expert at handling a beer tent. Ideally, I like to bring in a bar like Bourbon Street or something like that. Somebody who's going to be able to handle the beer tent from start to finish who's an expert at this, who our beer tent to somebody like Bourbon Street is a Thursday night. You know, Ideally, we want to have an expert come in where they bring the staff, they bring the alcohol, they have their license, they have their insurance, they have everything to cover, everything that needs to be covered. They're the professionals. Okay, And that's, that's something we're already into talks with them. Obviously, pending approval. Um, food vendors, obviously, it's an outdoor event. We do want to sell food. Um, not everybody can be in a food truck, so any food vendor that comes out, obviously, they have to comply 100% with the health department, any requirements, anything that's needed. They have to or else they don't go there. Um, the way we are going to work the food vendors is we're not charging them to be there. We just do a profit split, um, which should attract more else at businesses to come out and say, hey, we'll offer you a free spot. You know, you just have to comply with anything the health department says you have to do. Um, ideally, most of the food vendors, though, they do catering. Since they do catering, it's kind of an easier setup for them. So at least that's one thing we ran into. Uh, medical tent, like I say, we request that from the fire department. If not, we will supply one ourselves. Um, I think this goes without saying, no staff support vendor volunteered. They're allowed to drink during the event. Zero tolerance. If they drink, they're gone. Um, we do staff our own security. We do supply all around sound, sound stage, setup, teardown. 
we do everything necessary with that. Uh, we do, when it comes to the financials, since there is money being given at the event, we do handle all that through a ticket system where people are not buying food, they're buying tickets from us, and the money is in one central location with security on it constantly. Um, all volunteers, we give them food and drink during the event. We make sure they're taken care of if they need anything. Uh, we have, you know, they take their breaks, they take what they need. Um, and after the event, we clean up. Monday morning, we don't even want you to know we were there. Mm. So, you know, usually the last thing to get taken down at these events is a stage. After we close the doors, the cleaning crew starts coming in and doing what they need to do. Um, so, outside of that, that is that's our idea. It's a great pres presentation, and uh, obviously this is something a little bit different. We've been talking for the last couple of weeks, and um, I can appreciate. Mark, what's your last name too? Worley. 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 Thank mm -hmm. you. And. Um, I've been, uh, Becky and I have been talking back and forth with Mark the last couple of weeks, and um, certainly we're always interested in um, community events, especially when we have budget constraints that you can, maybe can make something happen to assist um, the effort. Obviously, you know, Mark, I, I like the presentation you just gave us, and actually that last page with all the requirements is the one that really kind of caught my eye and so forth then, too. And I think at this point, and I know you need, because this is a lot of planning that you've got, and you've only got a month and a half or two to get this done and stuff like that, too. Yeah, you know, every day hurts. confirm these sooner <laughs> or later. So I know we're under a little bit of a, a time crunch. I think at this point, well, first off, trustees, anybody questions? Mark? No, I was just going to say, I mean, I can feel his enthusiasm mm -hmm. just <laughs> in, in the presentation. And um, you know, it, it's really great to hear. Thank and, you. And so I, th I think this is a great idea. And I think what I'd like to do, Mark, is, um, and I can try and set this up right away. I know that the fire chief is on vacation starting tomorrow for, a, but I can get the deputy chief in here. Mm -hmm. I think we need to do a quick roundtable with you to see what, what everybody needs, because now that I actually have a grocery list in front of me, mm -hmm. this is a lot easier to identify with what you need okay. and if we can make this happen. Um, I really think I, we need a, a quick roundtable with the building department, police, fire, all the powers that be. I got public works there and water as well. Okay. And this way, if, if we can all have some input as far as everyone, and I, I, I don't want to speak for you, gentlemen, but I know a lot of you guys have some, a little bit of experience with uh, you know um, events like this, and um, maybe collectively we can all put some ideas together. Trustee Delzal, I know you've got some experience in, we're in the community you work in, too. Anything maybe you think we're looking at or missing or anything you want to add to it? No, I thought it was a great presentation. I just want to make sure that legal is brought into that. Absolutely. Sure that we're right. The private public. That's what we'll do. How about if we do that, Mark? How about I, I'll, um, I'll organize something tomorrow back if we can. Let's get a schedule together this week, and um, I'll see you if, if our attorney's available. Uh, for just a, I try and keep it down to an hour, that we, you know, so we don't eat, eat up everybody's day or whatever. Uh, let me see what I can put together, and let's do a roundtable. And uh, we'll talk to you about a schedule uh, to get in here. And um, if we can come up with something, uh, even like this week, and some something tentative, um, who knows? I'll be communicating with the board, as I should, and I'll let everybody know what's going on in case there's any problems. Uh, we can address it accordingly then, too, but we'll bring it back to the board for approval and go from there. Yeah, okay. So I appreciate it. Potentially approve it next Monday at the yeah. board meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I know you guys start working on getting all your all your things together right away I, and so forth. I so. do. Something like this is more of a, like Trustee said, it's, for me it's more of a passion. I do mortgages 9 to 5, so okay. I'm behind a desk doing boring work <laughs> all day. Yeah. So for something like this, it's it's just fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've got, it, just to let you guys know, I've got a team of people already that have worked with me over the years that pretty much everybody is sitting at bay waiting for the approval. Once we get the approval, I flip a switch, everybody gets to work. Great. So that's pretty much all we're waiting on. So Sometimes just, finding volunteers, I mean, I, you can't find somebody to help you paint, your, paint the wall in your house, you know, that kind of thing. That's ridiculous. So Good help is hard mean, to find. Yeah, I mean, volunteerism uh, is, is kind of a toughie, but certainly we can ask the question and see what we can do. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, um, I, I'm sure our police and fire uh, representatives, they'll know 
how many representatives they need on, you know, in the field, and we can look at the budget on that at the same time then, too. Okay. okay? Mark, thanks for coming in and talking to us. And Not if a you problem. will, please, Thank you can sign in for the clerk, okay? Sure. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Very good. Uh, moving on, then, with the agenda. The, um, we have a presentation from Anthony Shea in regards to having a restaurant with a liquor license at 4002 West 127th Street. Uh, this is the L-shaped property at 127th and Pulaski. Right, Anthony? Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for being here. Um, it's my first time doing this, so I actually didn't know how many people I was going right. to be in front of. So I did come up with this book, if you want sure. to see. So, Anthony, and just so everybody knows, I haven't had a chance to meet with you yet. And I was kind of yeah, short notice. No, I spoke to Becky on Thursday regarding this concept that I want to start. And basically... It is a restaurant. There will be gourmet sandwiches. There will be hot and cold. There will be hot, hot and cold sandwiches. There will be breakfast sandwiches, lunch specials, dinner specials. There will be beer and wine. That's why I'm here to, you know, get an approval for the vi from the village for licensing. Also, what I'm going to focus on really is my family is in restaurant business. They live in Dallas, Texas. I am born and raised here. I'm 24 years old. I been in retail business for since I was 15. I know what how to bring in people. I know how to keep a nice, clean, tremendously neat establishment. Um, I chose Alsa because I'm here a lot in the town and I love the area. There's so much to do and I play pool up at one of the locations up here on Pulaski and. I'm actually in the end of my lease and I'm planning on moving here so I said I want to get started on my own with this concept and focus on making something for myself. So Anthony, obviously Sandy's Cafe, um, how big is, first off, how big is the establishment? 2,000 square feet and okay. it's actually, yeah, just about 2,000 square feet. There's okay. the Dunkin Donuts, there's a flower shop, there's a um, like a, I can't even think of the business. It's like a no, yeah. It's Dunkin' Donuts is a, a um, Mexican restaurant and a few other businesses. Yeah, and then the mobiles there, Metro PCS, and then uh, I want the establishment like right in the middle. Okay. I've been on terms with the landlord. I have an LOI from him saying I can go in whenever. Just need village approval. Um, I'll ask right out because uh, obviously because of the name I had too. Is is it is the primary focus? I mean, I like the menu that you had. And it was an affordable menu. The menu there, is too. not complete. There's a lot more that needs to be added because, like I said, I spoke with Becky Thursday and I needed to come up with something fast. So I, my friend has a printing shop. So I said, let me get something like a rendering made quick. So I just whatever came to mind quick because I didn't was not expect, <laughs> expecting to be sure. here so quick. Right. You know, like, menu's going to have ice cream, espresso, cold, like, uh, hot and cold uh, coffees, drink, drinks, and um, a lot more than what's just there. But I'm focusing on, like, a really high-end gourmet sandwich type okay. business with delivery, too. Really? Okay. So, I mean, by the renderings, real contemporary look, folks, and with the... Um, we're familiar with the new type of walls now, where it's got kind of that wavy. Yeah, so I want to make. I want to do a like modern that. look. I want. It's not. It's going to be an. It's my first big project, and you know I'm really looking forward to it. Right. It's going to be a lot different than most restaurant cafe type deals. You know, I want to make a nice, tremendous, comfortable lounge area for people to just feel welcomed and. What kind of what kind of liquor license are you gonna be looking for? A full you know full bar or beer and wine or what? Beer and wine pouring license. Okay. And um, yeah, and like you know, focus heavily on the food. That's like my main because so, like I said, my family has restaurants in Dallas. I'm from here. I want to do something here for myself. Okay. Um. Any uh, and, and like you said, have you, have you had a restaurant before? I've worked, okay. I worked in a few down in Dallas okay. with them, but then at the same time when I was in college, I was I'd work at the cell phone stores and I'd work because we have cell phone stores as well. I'd okay. work there and I'd work here and 
Just, you know. Okay. Also, there will be, I'd like to have, you know, video gaming as well. Right. That's, you know, would be a liking interest for sure. And certainly that's up to the state down of the road. Of course, yeah. Right. And I've uh, I've talked with the landlord. He liked the concept of what I'm doing. And he's, you know, me and him, I told him the way I run retail and the way, and the way I do my thing, that once the establishment is up and running and fully built, I feel it'll bring in more tenants to that property because it's going to be a really nice setup. Okay. You know, Dunkin' Donuts will benefit everyone. I feel like other tenants will move in as well. So is this kind of, is it going to be geared kind of, I know you're offering food, but do you consider it more of a nightclub or a restaurant? or More of a food and rest, cafe restaurant. Okay. But there will be beer and wine, like just for everyone. And, and I know these are just renderings, but is this really what you're going to place it to look like? Similar, yes, right. very similar. No, it's, it's a high-end look. That's what very I'm nice focusing on. Yeah, it's on. very contemporary. Um, certainly, before we do any, you know, the, always I've always found that one of the first steps before you get um, too involved is even before you get a liquor license, you need a business license, and before you need a business license, is the end game is to know whether or not the board would consider even a liquor license for you then too. And Correct. That's, that's, you know, because you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to go in front of a planning and zoning commission to qualify you for a, a special use because we got to rezone this from what they call a B1 okay. business district to B3 that would include alcohol out there then too. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, you know, it's my first time presenting, so I'm... I get a little it, sure. nervous, but and I, like I said, I, I didn't. You know, I'm figure. I'm getting this. I got the steps figured out now. I do know that in order to get a pouring license, the village has to be on board as well. In, I believe Becky, she stepped out with somebody, but um, I, did she give you a list of of the cost involved for a lot of this too already? She did not. Okay, so she uh, only thing she told me was. Uh, there will be a hearing Monday at 7:30. Right. At so I, I can give you some ballpark figures. In order to get set up with with a liquor license, just so you know the upfront cost, you've got a uh, planning zoning commission hearing that can cost anywhere between 700 and 1,000 dollars. Okay. Yeah. Good. And then you would have a 1,000 dollar application fee for for the liquor uh, investigation. Yeah. And then in the initial liquor license would be fifty six hundred dollars which once a year you're going to renew that for seventeen hundred dollars and um, right now the gaming uh, licenses annually are five hundred dollars per machine so you, most guys get five machines you know if, if the if the state qualifies for it, if they allow that you know, you're looking at twenty five hundred dollars a year for licensing on that I'm looking forward i was you know i had other people that are sort of in the concept but not the same but they were telling me that okay. there's some money behind then, it and i think the only other one i was missing was the business license then too so there were i don't have i don't have that fee written for me kent are you from based on with? square footage oh that is you're right it's based on square footage for the business license so i don't have that right in front of me right now but there's a fee on that as well yeah i'm, I'm willing to so comply i guess all that. my question would be uh, to the board at this point then too is we have to bring this to the board even to consider whether or not we we want to create another liquor license we don't have none available at this point okay so if mr. Shea were to get a business license for this facility uh, I guess it would be my question to the board whether or not we'd like to create a liquor license to assist that business trustee Delzell and I were speaking this is the same place that uh, the Italian restaurant was supposed to go into? Yes. With the liquor license? Right. And with the size of your menu and stuff, I would have no... It's basically the same premise. And actually, that the trustee, just so you know, too, that business still um, has life, and they changed the location. Instead of going, we had another business that was interested. Oh, okay. Instead of that location, they went to the other side of town. They're actually setting up something at like 115th and Pulaski. Over the bridge, right? Next, like, to, yeah. Uh, um, so where I notice, like being in this town, like you know, you have everything, like at 115th, 16th, and then there's the bridge, and there's not really much 
action over there, which I'm hoping that if I can get an establishment there, I'd like to be there. Uh, um, actually, uh, kind of right next door to you, there's a little bit of gaming in the in the yeah the Mexican. I think it's a Mexican restaurant. It's a Mexican um, restaurant right there. Yeah, what's 127th La Fiesta? In is that the name of the restaurant next to the firehouse? Right, they've got gaming in there. Okay, but um. Trustees, yeah, I haven't brought it back to you because they haven't set up. Rockies hasn't got set up yet down at, he's going into um, Howard Chanowski's building down next to Nancy's Pizza. And he's going to have an agreement that he's not going to compete with them on the selling slices or whatever the case is. But they're going to, they're going to, the same business that we qualified is going that direction. But as you mentioned, Trustee, we did identify that location once. So. And with ones that we've approved before, either cafes or restaurants with a potential for gaming, a couple of them have never come through. Right. And it's been quite a while, and there's been no movement. Right. So. I'm ready to move as soon as possible. To, <laughs> to have somebody that's ready to start giving to us. take action. The other one that, that we looked at, it. and I don't think it's going to take flight, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but was the one uh, for Mr. Pappas. I don't think he's going to take advantage of that. I think there was – I haven't seen any action on that, on that, but I don't want to put words in his mouth either. Well, there's a few of them I've been watching, you know, yeah. hoping that they would, you know, after we approved them, they would come around, and there's a few of them that just haven't yet. So. I appreciate that. And certainly, trustee, we're, trustees, we're doing our part to try and entice these businesses if we can to, to fill up these storefronts. But uh, as Mr. Shea is uh, requesting, um, that's the reason I'm bringing this back. The other thing I'd like to do, though, is I'd still like to take a look at, at the consideration. Um, Mike Hanker had proposed that we modify the ordinance not to require the special use anymore, but just to have... A blanket B3? Right. right. I agree with that. And I, I think that that's the right way to go, and we should consider that, maybe bring that along with at the same point in time. We can do that. It, well, our, it's streamline our, our process quite a bit. Is it, Anthony, it's nothing to do with you. Uh, we're, what we're saying, though, is rather than having folks have to appear in front of a plan and zoning commission to qualify each business they'd ask for, a, let's say, to be um, for special use, as the trustee pointed out, to have liquor on site, you can actually just rezone the entire business district to have that and all we'd be doing is sitting there and qualifying whether or not we want to make a liquor license and it just makes the life easier so like out without having so many layers and stuff so like a different location or no it, same it, location, same location just, just a different different process we're trying to okay. simplify okay. our life so a little bit easier. and yours or the potential per, you know person at the same time okay um well then here's what i'll do uh and also too i would I'm sorry, Tristy. I was looking the other way before. Did you have a okay. question? No, I'm fine. Okay. Um, this won't be one location. I'm looking in other properties as well in Alsa, but okay. this one is my first, and I like the area. Well, it helps that you're bringing up. You're not just you know you're you're trying to promote an actual restaurant here and stuff, which is great. Yeah. We're always looking for things that have retail sales tax behind. That's what helps helps us pay our bills. Of course. Um, how about if I do this for you then? Um, Trustees, if it's all right, then I'll, I'll put them on the agenda for next week to at least get you an approval to create a liquor license for you. So at least you know there's an end game for you. Yeah. In the meantime, you go through the rest of the process with my office to get a business license and so forth. Then And then yeah, after all that's done, we'll keep it moving. Okay. Perfect. Okay. How um, close to that rendering are you going to make it? Say that again? How close to the rendering are you going to make it? I'm going to put a little more detail in the menu, but the... Um, I'm talking the design. The design the is going to look probably better than the rendering. This is a, it's a beautiful I'm sorry thing. we didn't have this on a PowerPoint. Folks, no, I but know, but it's uh, a very good-looking contemporary idea. It looks very nice. Um, Here, can we reach out to the village attorney and see Do you want to hold on to that? Sure. Like, you want to keep I will, that? yeah. Okay, perfect. Reach out to the village attorney and see if maybe we can consider that consolidation for the liquor. Oh, absolutely. No, I'm, I'm listening, yes. And um, for next, okay. if you said you were going to put me on an agenda for next Next week. week. I can bring more of those as well. That'd be great, Anyone's just so on. everybody understands. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, like anything else, Anthony, uh, I, we appreciate the, you know, the idea that you're looking to invest in our community. Yeah, yeah. of course. I and I hope you have a great business. But Thank you for... Let's, let's, we'll start from square one, and uh, we're, we're sure a couple of trustees tonight, but hopefully we'll have them on board next week. Perfect. And um, we'll, get, we'll get you going. So for next week, do you, I come back here? Yeah, if you'd like to, and just in case anybody has a question, or anything, awesome. we have a couple of folks missing in case they have any questions. And um, at the same time, 
uh, all we're doing is just asking if we if we'll create a liquor license for you, so that you know you've got a small, you know, insurance there that, that yes. you've got an end game that's going to work for you. Yeah, and I'm thinking if everything does go as planned with licensing, zoning, all that, I'm hoping to be open if all goes to well, everything by maybe January. Okay. Because I know the licensing takes a while, but construction-wise, it's not going to take long because we have a good contractor behind us to do all the designing and all that. You know, I was reading up uh, on some uh, – the police chief and I had a meeting recently, too, and – Certainly, always keep in mind, I know there's going to be a lot of things coming your way, but I'm going to remind everybody that asks for liquor licenses and whatnot, you have to have Bassett certified personnel that serve that serve the liquor mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. too. Cook County mandated that back in 2015. And I'm going to be looking closer at that, yeah, too, as we renew licenses and all that kind of thing then, too. Everything will be perfect. Okay. Well, thanks, Anthony. If Mr. you would, please Chair, just sign, sign in. Please. Thank you, guys. Okay. Eric, can we push that uh, presentation through to Brian, maybe have it? Scanned up so we can present it next week. Sure. Uh, put on online. No, get to Brian so that we can. Oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, he was going to bring hard copies for you, but I'll have Brian download this and send it to everybody then too. Well, that way we can throw it up in the. Big oh, I'm screen. sorry. Oh, I put it on the big screen. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. And uh, last, I had a request to approve the appointment of um, Christopher Murphy is a Village of Elsip trustee to fill the position vacated by uh, former trustee Michael Pierce. Um, Mike's last meeting was um, August 6th, and um, that would be my request by the board to approve that appointment next week. Um, trustees, any questions on that or anything? Did you want to point out that fellow? I could. Chris, you want to come up and say hello? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Murphy. Uh, a lot of you guys uh, know me. Um, I'm a uh, ELSA president for 21 years. Um, I work for Compass Group uh, USA. I'm uh, the executive chef manager for Cintas uh, Corporation at 73rd and um, Central in Bedford Park. And uh, looking forward to working with you guys pending approval. So, any questions? I also uh, was the Saint president of the St. Terrence Men's Club for the last six years. And you stepped down recently and stuff. Then, I did. So, yeah. I did. Okay. I did. Um, no, I, uh, I've i known Chris um, just basically I met you at church. And yeah. um, I, I think Chris would make a, um, a very good representative for this community. You've, you've, you've ran in a couple of campaigns. I did. And um, never, I've never ran with you or anything like that. But I can, um, you you ran with some good folks. I, I know. Um, I, don't have, I don't want to point you. fingers, but I will. You know, <laughs> yeah, you ran with a couple of folks. You know, but um, no, I, you know, like anything else in this world. You know, I, I, I um, I think it's wonderful when we do put together uh, or consider people too. Is you know, our job here is um, public service, and um, whether it's Little leagues or scouts or this or that, you know. I think you've done your share of um, volunteerism with the church and so forth, and yeah. I, and um, I appreciate that, you know, because again, um, like many of us, we, we've all donated our times to different sources, and uh, I think it's important to the community know how to serve others if, if you plan to step up and do it a second time. So definitely, yeah. But um, Chris, I, I, I'll ask. I'll put this on the agenda next week and ask the board uh, if they'll approve that appointment and. Um, if, and, I hope, and I hope for the best, for, for a good outcome. Great. All right. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. And last, folks, I just want to report that um, we got a report back that it was going to start today, but any day now, um, this week, the car wash on Pulaski is going to finally be torn down. <laughs> and, um, sure it is. Sure. Come on. I mean, it was supposed to happen today. But yeah, it was, actually it was supposed to happen. Possibly. Roger told me the 15th, and um, Roger. Bog, bog delayed it. Yeah, you know, I think he just did that just to push my buttons and to tell me something <laughs> good. That's all, you know. And then, um, anywhere from the 12th or to the 15th.